people here from uh, all over the world. Um, we've had people from most of the UK, uh, from Europe, uh, from Poland, from Czech Republic, from Slovenia. Uh, we've got people from the USA. Um, and we've even got somebody from China here, wherever Long is. I'm not sure where he is, but he's here as well. So we've got a, a really international uh, set of people here this afternoon. And uh, our aim is really to give you a, a good idea of the hop crop this year, to give you some information about what's happening in the world of hops. Outside the marquee here, we have some fantastic views of the Malvern Hills. If you look over in that direction, the Malvern Hills. If you go east from the Malvern Hills, there's no higher point until you get to the Urals in Russia. That was a, that was a really good thing that Rod, Roger Ryman from St. Hostel told me last night. So thank you, Roger, for that gem. Um, uh, and uh, if you look to the west, this way, um, we then got the Herefordshire border, which is about 50 yards down the road, uh, probably about 150 actually. And then further west, obviously, we go into Wales and some lot higher hills out that way. So just a little bit of geography of where we are. Right, so we've done things a little differently this year. It's all uh, British hops and mainly developmental varieties from our programme, both here in the UK and in uh, Poland and the Czech Republic. So a big thank you to all the breweries who've um, kindly sought us out with beer this year. We've got beer from Purity, from uh, Timothy Taylor's, which unfortunately I think was already gone by the time you came in this morning. Um, from Swan Brewery uh, over in Leinster, not too far away. From Marston's, from Adnams. Uh, I've brewed one as well. You see my lovely face on the front of the barrel. We got one from Chris, actually. I think Chris, we've got a small pilot plant now they're brewing on, so... Um, yeah, we've actually got uh, friends from Hot Products. Where are you in Czech Republic? Oh, he's behind us. So um, <laughs> they've worked closely with a local brewery to them. Um, we've got a variety called Most, which I believe is Czech for uh, bridge. Is that correct? Yep. So that's a sister plant to Jester that we actually couldn't get to grow over here. It wasn't it wasn't taking very well, so they've um, planted it over there, and it's um, really gone well. So um, yeah, you're very happy with it, aren't you, Indra? The Most variety. Yeah, it's going really well. So. Um, yeah, the idea is that we've got um, newer varieties to show that we can get some of those new world flavours and aromas, but from British grown hops. So, just to quickly run them through, we've got uh, beers with uh, Olicana, uh, Jester, Ernest, UK grown Cascade, and Chinook, uh, and then some as yet unnamed varieties. So, if you like the beers and they think they brew well, that may well be that we'll see them in the future um, as named varieties. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, if anyone's got any questions about the beers, um, yeah, I'll be over there um, helping you sample them, so come and hassle me, all right. The other bits and pieces I want to talk about are with these guys, basically. We're now um, into harvest. The crop is coming in. If I can start with you, Ali, you've got the mic there. Um, can you just guide us through the season this year? What, what's the crop been like? What's the, what's the, uh, the season been like? What, what sort of pests and disease problems have we come across, and how are we looking? Is there any wood anywhere that I can touch? Um, so in terms of the weather, it's been pretty perfect. Um, we started the year worrying about drought because it was really dry and we got lots of rain. Um, we None of us thought we'd get last year's hot temperatures. We've had some nice warm sunny days but thankfully nothing as hot and sustained as last year but pretty nice summer actually. Um, so it's looking pretty good. Um, you tell me when you go out and have a look at the hops. Um, but it's looking like a nice growing year. But do you know what? This is only day seven of our hop harvest. We've got five weeks to go. And a grower this morning said, there is that hurricane in America that could come and flatten a lot. And um, what about the acreage in the UK this year? What's happened there? Is there, are there any changes? Uh, any varieties going out, coming in? Uh, it's uh, pretty stable. Um, we've been at 1,000 hectares for 15, 20 years now. Um, that's ticked up slightly in the last three or four years by 2%, 3%, 4%, but not much. Um, quite a lot of change of varieties going on. Um, but interestingly, um, some of those changes are into our traditional varieties. So Goldings, Fuggle, Admiral, those are all on the list. Phoenix was on the list this year for more planting, which I'm really pleased at because that actually is a variety we grow and we were for a while the only grower. So it's really nice that we're not alone anymore. Um, so yeah, there is a little bit of change, but it's a pretty stable position, which I'm very proud to be able to report that. 
I should ask everybody this because Jill from uh, Swan Brewery in Lemster, where are you, Jill? She asked the question: What is the percentage of the uh, UK crop in terms of the world crop? What does it relate to? About one and a half percent. So one and a half percent of the world crop is grown in the, U yeah. in the UK. Right. Okay. Great stuff. Thank you, Ali. That's super. And if I move on to Yindra, Yindra has come over from the Czech Republic today to speak to us. Um, he's uh, responsible for looking after quite a few of the hops in uh, the uh, Jatets region of uh, Czech Republic. Yindra, how's the crop been, or the season been so far this season for you guys? Yeah. Good afternoon. Thank you, Paul. Uh, this season uh, in Czech Republic is, uh, unfortunately, it seems uh, in summer, that we uh, will have the same, very similar year as last year. Uh, change was only in uh, during uh, during season. Uh, winter time was standard. Uh, spring uh, start of uh, growing hops was absolutely uh, in order. But uh, we had a very dry uh, April and very cold May. Uh, this uh, this case um, this these problems uh, cause uh, that uh, hops uh, uh, grow very slow and uh, uh, we have uh, uh, we had uh, uh, a lot of uh, small cones and uh, we get uh, very hot uh, baking hot uh, during end of uh, June and mainly during uh, July. Because yeah, that's a problem for uh, the growers in Czech Republic, because uh, some of them don't have irrigation, so there's, yeah. there's an issue there. What sort of percentage irrigation? Uh, it's around 5%. 5% is yeah. not irrigated, or, or it's, is irrigated? It's irrigated. It's irrigated, so it's a very small amount that's yeah. irrigated, so that a dry season will really affect the growers yeah. quite badly. But, uh, but uh, on the opposite side, 20-30% uh, uh, down around uh, rivers, in hot growing region, uh, the crop is very rich. Uh, maybe, maybe uh, higher than than average, but the rest of uh, dried parts, uh, mainly in higher level, uh, are dried, and there is plenty, but a very small cones. And opposite side, uh, uh, the quality this year seems very good. Uh, alpha and oils are uh, rich in the cones and the crop is uh, running now and this week uh, we will have an end. So next days and weeks uh, will be finalized last number. Uh, how looks harvest. So, so in the Czech Republic, just so you know, the, the, the hops are, are starting to harvest a lot earlier. So what week would you have started there, uh, Indra, in, in, in uh, Czech? When, when? Which, which, which week? Uh, which, so uh, 20th of August or a bit earlier? No, uh, harvest started in the right time, usually around 18, 19, 20 of uh, August. But most of the growers are growing sarts in the Czech Republic, so that variety is usually picked early, mm -hmm. and then the, there's no late varieties in yeah. the Czech. Yeah. First, uh, the first for picking is sarts. Uh, sarts is in ripen uh, ripening uh, from 18, 20 of August till and till the end of uh, August and 5 uh, September. And then we start to uh, picking uh, premiant variety. Then are uh, some new varieties as uh, Rohemia, Salzlait, Salzpecial, Kazbek. And the last one is uh, Sladek and Salzlait. So what you're saying is we should be okay with the supplies of Salz this year? No problems? Uh, with Salz? Yeah. Uh, in globally, in, in all Czech hop growing regions, uh, we are rating uh, low average, low average, low average, but quality pretty good uh, because alpha was uh, between two point two point five till uh, five. Okay. Thanks, Indra. That's excellent. Thank you. Uh, Bostian. Bostian has come from Slovenia. Um, lives in Prebol near uh, Jalec. Jalets and Jatets, I get mixed up sometimes. <laughs> um, yes. Bostian, how's the season been for the Slovenian growers? Oh, you know, Paul, it's always something happening in Slovenia, so the people who know us very well, they, they can say that. So, uh, also this year uh, wasn't exactly perfect. So, um, comparing to last year, where we were sitting here, 
we were the only one luckiest in, in Europe, I guess. I think you said you had an English summer, didn't you? So it rained and then it was sunny and then it rained and then it was sunny, so it yeah. cropped up really well. Yeah, in average, everything looks still decent, but uh, we had also a little bit of uh, cold and wet spring, so some earlier varieties uh, started to grow not so well, so there was a thin shot, you know, and uh, uh, varieties like Aurora, you know, they're, they're suffering the most, so, uh, and on those, those hopes we expecting are really a bit of a loss, yeah. so, uh, the percentage could be a lot, up to 30 percent yeah so if we if we're looking at your aurora we need to make sure we've got covered if you're looking for aurora this year the, the crop hasn't been great um on other varieties so yeah yeah Bobex. actually on other varieties the situation is quite okay you know so I like bobex and uh, salaya they'll be a normal a little bit below average perhaps uh, otherwise would be okay now, there are a few disease problems developing in, in Slovenia, and a lot, a lot of people don't want to talk about it, but I'm, are you okay to talk about the, the problems with diseases that we're getting in Slovenia? I'm okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk open, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I guess so, uh, like we, were, we, were, we were saying, yeah, there's always something happening in Slovenia, so uh, this, this year and a couple of years already, uh, there is a disease present, like a virus, virus which is spreading very fast. Uh, it attacks the plant totally and stop, stops the growth completely. And I guess it came, we first figure, first um, estimation are that it came from uh, spraying this, uh, because um, they're using this wire with to spray citrus trees, you know, not to grow too, too tall, you know. Uh, and, and I guess through some compost and something, it came to the, to the hop fields. So growing, just, you know. just to explain, Peter, some of you may have been here a couple of years ago and hear Peter Darby talk. Peter's here as well today. But Peter spoke about the citrus bark cracking virus, which is very uh, is used on citrus trees to reduce the size of the trees. Um, somebody's thrown an orange away somewhere, or it's gone into a compost heap, and it's come in and it's gone into hops. Now, citrus bark cracking virus might work very well for reducing the size of oranges, um, but certainly it doesn't. We don't want it when we want to grow nice tall hops. So this is the the problem that we're talking about. So what have growers been doing to try and overcome that, Boschan? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I need to warn everybody: it's not uh, harm to people, you know. So it's only it affects the plants. Uh, so yeah, nobody's going to die from drinking beer, maybe. That's <laughs> that's <for> the, uh, <laughs> yeah. Still keep using Slovenian hops. So. Still healthy. Yeah. Uh, but in general, like uh, uh, first informations which are now. This could be also a general problem in the hop industry. So, the, the information that are coming in, there is some also some situation in Germany. So, and it could be a general problem. So, so, so what are the growers actually doing? They're, they're taking out some acreage to try and reduce that, or yeah, uh, actually, the we reduce that from the last year, from which we have the 1,700 hectares, and small like more than 3,000 acres, uh, a bit more. Uh, there, the reduction was 80 hectares, but we are planning to reduce another 100, 150 to 100 hectares in the next season. So it will quite affect our industry. Yeah, that's quite considerable. That's about 10% of the hops in Slovenia will be pulled out next year. Yeah. But the, the growers are saying that that will solve the problem. You know, we are still going around a little bit. Uh, so we are doing like uh, we're doing. Uh, we go in the in the in the procedure. If the virus appears like. In, a, in, a, in everywhere, uh, like uh, in the cattle, you know, or something. So we, we completely um, quarantined the area. So, and this, so far, there's some good results as well in this. So with the quarantine, and so the, wi the virus will die eventually in two years. So, uh, so in two years, we are planning to come back on the market with, with increase of the acreage. So, so we shouldn't expect any long-term problems with this. It should be cleared through, hopefully. To be honest, we don't know yet. Uh, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, thank you, Bostia. Thank you. Um, now, we, we didn't manage to get anybody here from Germany today, but uh, uh, Will, or Will as he is today, <laughs> is Billy. <laughs> Billy, sorry, Billy, is going to uh, give us a bit of a, a presentation. Oh, not presentation. We're going to talk to Will about the German crop. Um, Will, can you tell us a little bit about what's happened this season during the growing, growing yeah, season in Germany? So, Similar to the rest of Europe, there was a very cold, wet spring, no, sorry, cold, late spring, um, followed by a, a heat wave in June. So the plants were very slow to emerge, similar to Slovenia, but the heat in June really brought them forward very quickly. However, they, all the way through this, there was drought, so uh, very little rain at all in Germany. 
the drought broke in the middle of August, which we're very hopeful for the late varieties improving, but early varieties have shown signs of, of being low yielding. Um, on the positive side, disease has been few and far between. Everything looks pretty clean, uh, just a bit low on the yield. Well, there's lower yields on early varieties, but the late varieties look okay. We're hoping, and the indicators are, that the, the, the later varieties have had a long enough period to recover. And what's happening with the acreage in Germany? The, uh, the acreage changes? Have there been a lot of hops coming out and new plantings going in, or has it been steady and steady? Yeah, so the, the total acreage is 19,770 hectares in Germany. 486 of those are new acres in the ground, or new hectares. There's been a definite switch into, into high alpha and dual purpose variety. So Hercules has gone up very quickly on the alpha front. Pearl and Tradition, which are used a lot in lager breweries, uh, are used uh, are being planted quite significantly. Some of the traditional varieties, Herzbrucker, Mittelfruit, Tetnang, are quite stable. But some of the newer flavour varieties, like Mandarin and Bavaria, the acreage is being reduced quite quickly. As uh, Amarillo, which is now being grown in Germany, a third of the acreage of that was pulled out. And um, Mandarina Bavaria, unfortunately, is also being pulled out. Uh, Blanc, and is that the same thing with Blanc and Melon? Yeah, all with the new flavour varieties, growers got very excited about the prospect of having some, some new varieties to offer the market. And they overplanted. Uh, the, the market hasn't. Uh, they have been accepted, but not accepted at the level with, at which they were planted. So there's, there's a correction mostly going in to Hercules, Pearl and Tradition. Um, just a quick one to test your maths. What was the percentage of the German crop as a, a percentage of the world crop? It's 32%. 32% of the world crop. I didn't ask you guys about that, did I? Did I ask you about that? Uh, what percentage of the world crop is the Slovenian hops, Bosnia? Slovenian crop represents something like 3%. 3% and, and, and Indra for versus Czech Republic? 0 0.3. 0 0.3 percent. Okay, very good. Um, thank you guys. Um, moving on to uh, Gordon. Gordon's our CEO in the USA, based in uh, Portland and runs the office in Yakima um, and Portland. Gordon, how is the crop been this year in uh, the US? What's the, what's the season been like? Uh, the, the US is generally split, split into four areas for growing hops. So there's Oregon, Idaho, Washington, and then generally the Michigan area. West. Um, Yakima is by far the biggest area. Um, Weather-wise, this year, um, Oregon weather was fine, Idaho weather has been fine. Yakima, which grows about 75% of the hops in the States, did suffer from a lack of snowpack. It really relies on heavy snowfall in the winter, and then when that snow melts through the growing season, it's utilized by the hops. Um, very early this year, in Probably May, June, there was already water restrictions on some of the newer hop growers. Um, I don't think overall it's affected the hops, but um, certainly some of them did have their water supply switched off. Um, so that's had some effect on, on overall yields, not so much on quality. Um, but although there was low snowpack, there was a very, very big storm came through Yakima in around February, March. Um, I mean, it, this is quite a brutal storm. I mean, it, it killed 2,000 head of cattle. I mean, it was cold, it was high wind chill, and uh, cattle were dying. But that had the effect that the, the growers couldn't get on the fields to, to plant uh, newer varieties. There's been a lot of switching out of varieties, taking more of the, the older public varieties and replacing those with Citra, Mosaic, Eldorado. Um, those baby crops, baby plants couldn't be planted at the right time. So most growers would project a 50% yield on a new variety in year one, and they're definitely not going to get that on Citra in particular. So um, that's probably a variety to keep an eye on that um, there might be tight supplies of that and probably mosaic as well. So you say the, the, the public varieties going out, so things like Cascade and Chinook, uh, I would say the centennial cascades the big one i would say if anything there's possibly been uh, an overcorrection by the growers um, 
I think overall in the system there will be enough cascade, but there's definitely going to be some growers who have taken too much cascade out. It's probably, you know, a 20% drop in the, the acreage of cascade, but definitely Chinook, um, Centennial, uh, quite a large drop in Amarillo acreage, much the same as Germany. So I'd say Amarillo's maybe down 10%. Um, in Oregon, uh, the nugget variety in particular, probably 20% of the nugget has come out in, in Oregon. So the focus is still on aroma varieties in the US or is there any switch into the uh, high alpha? I'd alpha? say overall it's still aroma, um, but there's definitely some newer alpha varieties and the, the alpha acreage is increasing. Overall this year, um, acreage across all of the, the US is possibly up about 1%. But I think you'll see the overall yield of hops down maybe one or two percent, and that's just because of the large number of baby crops, um, and the the weight of hops just won't be there. So the acreage has gone up, but the volume of kilo, kilos of hops has gone down. Yeah, the yields the yields aren't coming in off the babies, so they. But it'll probably more. come in the next two or three yeah, years. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. And what about the acreage in the states? What's the overall acreage now, and what percentage of that is the world of the world uh, crop? The main figures come from the, the USDA, and it only really looks after the Pacific Northwest, which is um, Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Um, they're about 22,000 hectares. And then you can add maybe another 2,000 outside of that area. So overall, it's about 24,000 hectares, which is round about 40% of the world crop by acreage and probably by uh, production. So still, uh, the America is still the biggest production area in the world, followed by Germany, um, and uh, the other countries are still quite a small part of it, but very important part of what we're doing. Um, in terms of the development varieties, we're running some uh, programs here in the UK, which you've, you've obviously tried in the beers today as well. Um, and uh, Ali, do you, do you, sorry, can you pass that back across? Um, how do you see uh, the, 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 the British hop crop developing in terms of the flavors that people want and where do you think we'll be in maybe another five years time in terms of uh, British hops? Um, so what's happening, first of all it's really exciting because we have some really special people looking at it. Um, we're also very grateful to Charles Farham who got involved with bringing forward some of the aroma hops in our British hop breeding program and We've got a big spreadsheet, Paul, haven't we? We've got some really exciting hops on that spreadsheet, which we're just gently assessing and bringing through. There's potentially 10 or 12 really exciting hops um, out of 50. Um, how many will we bring forward? I don't know. It depends on what the market will stand, but certainly two or three will come through. So there's some very, and there's some very odd flavour notes in some of that. Yeah, I think with, with the breeding programs, and any of the breeding programs, even if the flavours are odd, we're quite interested in them, um, not rejecting them because they're odd, because if it comes through into a beer, then it's quite interesting, and that's something we can we can develop. But uh, we want to try everything. We don't really want to reject anything without it being uh, tried first. And then, as a farm, we're directly involved in the Charles Fair and Pride breeding program as well, um, and we've got some really exciting hops um, in a plot we've got a couple of acres which is devoted to all these new trial varieties coming through um, Richard and I were going through those um, a couple of weekends ago and there's some really lovely looking and, and the aromas weren't there two weeks ago we go back in this week next week but some really exciting hops and again some very exciting potential flavors coming through so I'm feeling really optimistic about the future and I think you didn't ask us about how the growers are feeling, um, but I'm going to tell you. Because um, I asked, when I s sit up here and talk about the crop, I ask um, the hop selling groups. And it was quite interesting this year. There is an optimism in British hops. Um, and I see that coming through because actually the level of investment, certainly 25 to 30% of growers put some significant investment into their infrastructure, not just planting new varieties, but investment into their drying, their picking. Here at Stocks Farm, we've swapped over from oil to gas. That was quite a big investment for us this year. So there is that optimism in the industry, which is really lovely, because I've been very optimistic about it for a while, but I, I think we're starting to see that come through. 
fantastic. Thank you, Ali. Have we got any questions for uh, any of our panelists? Anybody got anything we would like to ask? Well, we covered everything. That's amazing. We've covered everything. Fantastic. Uh, okay. Well, thank you, panel. Thank you for coming.